Hello everyone, I hope you're having an awesome day. Welcome back to another video. This is the whole climb of Sakalobra on my GoPro with Power Overlay and with me chatting. I know lots of you here are new, judging by the, the reception of the last video, so please consider subscribing. Uh, if you like what you see either here or in any of the videos that you've seen recently, please consider subscribing. Uh, I would really appreciate it. And if you don't want to hear my voice over the next 25 minutes, then also please consider putting over your own music and muting my voice and using this footage maybe as a bit of motivation. Uh, maybe you can do some uh, some intervals using this climb and like having a bit having like having something to watch so maybe there's something you can get out of this video that's that's not just me talking uh, so anyway let's get into it you know how these commentaries work usually uh, I do have some notes but I also like to go off topic and ramble a fair bit so for those of you that don't know this this climb Sacalobra is probably one of the most famous climbs in the world um, I said it like it is genuinely like one of the most probably like known and ridden climbs specifically on the island of Mallorca lots of people come to it uh, lots of people test themselves on it you know a lot of people will talk you know you know I've done you know oh, I'm, I'm, I'm chasing that sub 30 minutes on Sacklob or I'm chasing that sub 50 minutes which bear in mind you know I'm still very well connected with with club cyclists and all types of cyclists to be fair and any of you guys who are getting up this hill in like sub one hour bearing in mind this is like almost a 10 kilometer climb at seven percent if you're getting under it in under the hour like still hats off to you like i know it took me 24 minutes and 30 something seconds but in all honesty like there is there is some downsides of going up there this fast and that's like you know it's over like you know i now have to go back down and do it again if i really want to spend a, a longer amount of time on the climb and it's my own fault that i'm going up there this quick <laughs> in all seriousness i i really tip my hat off to the people who take almost double the length of time that it takes me to get up this uh, this climb it is it is a beast but it's also a very nice climb um, so the the flatter section at the bottom, I do say flat section because as you will see in this this whole sort of power overlay and data, um, this this climb does have some flat sections, does have some steeper sections. What I love about this climb, and why I will always sort of come back to this um, this sort of idea that climbing, or at least Climbing a mountain as fast as you physically can possibly get up it is not a case of just power to weight. It's not a case of, you know, oh, you've just got to suffer more than the next person. A lot of it comes down to pacing. A lot of it comes down to, like, giving it the beans, giving it the gas when it really matters and backing off or having the faith to back off when speed increases and you know you can capitalize on it elsewhere. Some of the stats from this climb, from this effort, from me, 24.36 was my official time on this 9.5 kilometer 7% section of road. I averaged 22.6 kilometers an hour with an average power of 378 watts, which is around about 6.3 watts per kilo. My average heart rate was 175 with my max coming right at the end 187 beats per minute. I paced the climb fairly evenly. Um, those of you that have ridden this climb, you know it can get affected by the wind, you know that it can get affected by traffic. If I was to give you some tips, literally, like I was told by almost everybody I spoke to, get out there as early as you possibly can. So I left, I rode there, it took me two hours to ride to, to the mountain, and I left at 6 a.m. And you'll see all that in the in the vlog. And I started the effort at about quarter past eight in the morning. I think I passed, there were cars coming down this mountain, I passed about four or five vehicles. 
Um, so it was it was perfect. It, it certainly wasn't the car park in air quotes that people experience when they come a couple of hours later. I know some of you have reached out and said, I saw you descending back into Palenza uh, later that morning and they they waved and they shouted and I saw them and I, I, I kid you not that there were just um, pelotons of cyclists coming from Palenza towards Sacalobra and this was about half past nine, 10 a.m. And I was thinking, yeah, if I'd have left it an hour or two later, I think I would have been a good few seconds slower. And bearing in mind that I only took the KOM by 18 seconds, then it literally did come down to to margins. Now, this section here is probably one of my most favorite parts of the climb, aside from the top. It's just because it's very busy. There's, there's things happening, there's things to see. You can still see somewhat down to your left here as it opens up. You can see a little bit of the village, um, the port area. Um, you don't get as nice views here as you do at the top, so that's why I think the top is my favorite place. But this early into the climb is super important to be very, very patient. Now, when I came out here, oh, there's a car. <laughs> when I came out here, um, I knew I only had a small window of opportunity to try and uh, have a stab at this mountain. And it was made all the more difficult by us flying in on the Wednesday. Uh, we, are, we landed about midday, and then the Thursday morning, 8 a.m. was when I had a stab at this. So I hadn't even been in or on the island for 24 hours. Now, preparation-wise, it's not ideal, but I know that with the 312 coming up just uh, 48 hours after this specific effort, then I tried to want—I I wanted to try and get that out of my legs, this effort, um, and give myself time to recover. So, in hindsight, I would have come out earlier, and I would have had a bit, a um, bit bit more preparation a few more days to just sort of get over that um, early morning flight of which I only slept four hours I then only slept six hours before I actually did this effort so you know so those of you that know you know recovery performance everything else like sleep can play a part in it for sure so there's one thing to like plan for this but it's another thing to just sort of and my attitude was I was just gonna go out there and just have a go at it and you know it didn't matter what the situation was we would just have a stab at it and whatever happens, happens. You can see on this section of road here, my power drops away just ever so slightly um, by about 30, 30 or 40 watts as the speed goes up to 31, 32 kilometers an hour. One of the faster sections of the climb, uh, I noticed. And I also noticed that nearer the top was one of the slowest sections of the climb, <laughs> which is kind of where you don't want it. Like you're getting right to the end of the effort and you can see the timer ticking and you know it's going to be close, and uh, and I, I, and you don't want you don't want that to be the slowest bit. You know you want you want to be covering ground fast when you know that the clock is ticking and it's going to be close in the end. So there was a lot of tension, sort of during the effort. I didn't know until maybe the last five minutes. I didn't know if it was doable or not. Um, I started the lap. Um, I pressed lap on my bike computer probably about 50 meters before the actual KOM started. So I gave myself a buffer. Um, but yeah, I, I was I knew it was close at the top, but I didn't know I didn't know which side of close it would be. Do you know what I mean? I didn't know whether it would be um, 10 seconds either side. Um, so, you know, I, I've made a couple of notes. I wanted to touch on some things. Um, you know, I think... Uh, I, I wish... I don't know. No. I, I, I just want to talk through what I did. Uh, and hopefully you can improve your time um, using this video. Um, you know, hopefully you come away with something from this. Uh, whatever it may be, whether it's just even watching where I ride on the road, um, that's, that's that's a very simple um, sort of tip to pick up, I suppose. Um, 
it's a shame we don't have sort of footage of actually uh, well me then like this point of view is is good as in like it gives you a sense of where I'm riding and the speed and everything else but it doesn't give you a sense of like sort of my body position and you know changing gears and you know like these little things, these little things you can pick up on. Um, I was to to talk about body position. I was seated virtually the whole way, apart from the last like three hundred meters, uh, which might surprise some of you. I don't know, but it's always been my style anyway to stay seated. It's something that sort of holds me back a little bit when I do the shorter climbs. Sort of you know anything shorter than five minutes, I guess, where a bit more raw power is needed. Um, you know, aerodynamics do play a part on a climb like this, if you're going fast enough, obviously, but on a day like today, uh, I knew that staying seated would be the most effective way to get to the top. Um, and, you know, just minimizing sort of hand positions. It's very easy to, you know, when you're right on the limit, it's very easy to sort of let things slip and your your concentration starts to go and you start thinking about how hard it actually is and you start thinking about like I can't maintain this and you start changing things to take your mind off it whereas in actual fact you just need to concentrate on it what I find works really well is just concentrating on that sensation and you've got to learn really how to harness not the pain because it's, it's that's too sort of gimmicky but like you've got to learn how to just sit on what hurts and then not enjoy it but know that it's not actually there to stay like you're in control of the effort it's not until i did a I did an interview with hort root about this this specific effort and i said it's very important to stay patient it's very important to stay within yourself that's not to say to start easy you started an effort that you know in 10 minutes time is going to feel mega freaking hard and then you know that's when it's one or not one or lost but that's when you know it's time to go like that's when you know concentration has to be next level that's when you know you have to be completely on it and devoted to that effort um so the last seven minutes for me is where I really started to just sort of go within myself and, and say, this is this is it now. Like the, the first, um, what is it? First 16, 17 minutes, like that doesn't matter. Like I've done, I've got to this point now on the mountain. Now this is where, this is where it matters. This is where I drive it home. And I actually started to, to waver a little bit in the last couple of minutes. You'll see... You know, because of the hairpins, there's a lot of things going on, so my power starts to like fluctuate, and I start to ride to sensations rather than to power. But I was starting to waver, and I was starting to sort of go in and out of. Um, you know, you have your little person on your shoulder telling you this is this is too hard. You're not going to make it. You're going to blow. I was starting to have those conversations, and you've just got to like sort of shake your head and like try and get rid of it. Um, and that's what was happening like quite close to the end um so although i probably made it look effortless and you'll see from the 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 power overlay that it doesn't look like i waver but like psychologically i was like right on the edge and um i know that i think I, knowing that i was capable of doing it is is half the battle and you can be the, you can be the same way like you can know that you're capable of beating your personal best you have to have confidence in the fact that on that day you're going to pull out that performance um you know that that's like the last bit of the puzzle really like if you don't believe you can do it then it doesn't matter what you've you know what preparation you've done in training then you know how is that gonna how is that going to affect you on on the day um to me like as some people have said to me like the the actual kom itself doesn't doesn't mean um as much as the the satisfaction in saying to myself i'm going to go out there and i'm going to have a small window to do this and whatever happens i'm going to attempt it 
And regardless of what happens, like I'm putting my neck on the line to say I'm going for it. If it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, okay, so what? But the biggest takeaway for me is that I went out there, I did it, and then I executed on it. And although there was a little bit of doubt in my mind that, you know, with the flying out and everything being last minute and leaving early to get to the climb and, like, you know, having the doubt that, like, can I even do this sort of effort at 8 a.m. in the morning? Like, even that, that's a small thing, you know? But, like, in your head, you're like, crap, like, I'm, I'm going to have to do, like... A, a really big effort this early in the morning and like some of us we can't do it and and I, str I struggled I struggle to do an effort that hard that early in the morning um, but I managed to get through it <laughs> um, but to me it's all about testing myself like climbs test me I, I don't I'm not really driven so much by the you know let's top a leaderboard it's more about like how fast can I go like what am I capable of doing and looking back on it I, I did 6.3 watts per kilo and that was enough to take the the KOM by 18 seconds but I've done more and you'll know and I'm sure there's lots of you in a similar boat like yes we can be satisfied with things but like you should always try and one-up yourself like you can be satisfied with what you've done like you know you you shouldn't live your life being sort of disappointed with everything but you need to be satisfied but then know that you could you can do more you know and believe that you can do more and i've done more in the past you know that the week previous to this effort i did 6.5 watts per kilo for 22 minutes so 6.3 for 25 is 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 a pretty good there or thereabouts number but i know with a bit more, I could probably have etched out a couple more seconds. Um, but that's something for me to come back in the future and do, you know, and, and to not stress about now. You know, I, I, I can just put that on the shelf and then come back to it when I feel like coming back to it, you know. And it's the same for any of us going for personal bests. Um, that's just that's just my opinion on it. Um, but um, I think uh, the climb itself is one of my favourites in terms of having a bit of flat, having some steep, having some sweep in the sharp corners, good and bad tarmac. Um, but I think there's better on the island. I think there's better climbs in Mallorca. I'm just putting that out there. Um, maybe you agree, maybe you disagree. Let me know in the comments. Um, Sakalobra is great. I think you know you do it once or you keep trying to go back and do your PB, but like don't forget that there's other climbs that are you know, just as awesome, um, that, are, that are really worth doing, um, but yeah, I, I'm still, I'm, I'm still, like, well happy with, with my performance on this climb, and I'm, I'm blown away, my phone was hot for days, guys, my phone was completely, um, on fire for, like, two or three days afterwards, um, you know, messages, DMs, uh, there was articles and magazines writing about it, um, you know, Facebook of all places, it was just like, it was going crazy. Um, I kind of knew a little bit, I knew I knew that, you know, something of this calibre would definitely, um, you know, get, get put out there, I suppose, but I just didn't expect it to be as quick or as 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 fast like spreading as much as it did um but i, I i'm b being real with you like those of you that and if you're not subscribed please subscribe because this is you know this is just me being me but like like real talk setting the fastest time on the segment or any segment for me is great and all but it's not the be all and end all like I do these to sort of test myself and put myself under some sort of like performance stress and anxiety like I've been there I've raced you know I've raced all of the world I was lucky enough to race all of the world and and be part of like some great teams and have a lot of sort of you know performance stress and anxiety from those things and over the last 10 years you know training race all those things have sort of prepped me for you know this effort it's the same with any effort that i encounter you know now 
I've got all this sort of history backed up behind me and it's I, I do these as like they keep me on the edge they keep me on the edge like I don't just sort of um, you know I, 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 I know that doing this sort of thing is going to attract attention both good and bad but I know that for myself it's scratching an itch um, I I'm, I'm, I don't go for segments often but I like to think that when I do I want to go for them like properly or I want to go for segments that are that have like leaderboards with you know with professional riders on or you know whatever like like you're getting a real insight now into into like how my brain works I suppose but <laughs> I just feel like I just I don't know I just feel like if I have like I understand what people say about like descending is a great skill and it totally is but it's like the opposite of climbing they both have very similar attributes though like to climb well it's not just about power to weight it's about pacing it's about like like sweet like knowing the corners taking the lines but it's the opposite of descending so it's also taking the lines but you're taking them at different speeds and you've got to know what's going to get you to the top the fastest it still comes down to speed at the end of the day you know what's going to get you to the top the fastest what's going to get you to the bottom the fa fastest um and it, 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 it's like those I don't, I don't know like I, I want I want that fear of of failing so when I know that the leaderboard is full of your riders that have maybe taken it as hard as they can and they're at, they're at a very high level of their sport or they're in their prime and you know maybe they've done it in a race or maybe they've done it on a training or whatever really because that that's the whole sort of you know, it, it doesn't really matter at the end of the day for me because it's just me versus me. But you always have, I want that doubt and I want that challenge. I want that high chance of failing, if you use that word failing, of not taking the top spot. Like, if I went for segments that I knew were not a done deal, but they weren't as sort of that trying to explain but like the 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 idea that you you need to get everything right to take that you have to be at the top of your game to have a chance you have to do everything right to be there and that's what that's what gets me going and like it literally translates to all of us it doesn't translate to just me going for the very top spot it translates to you trying to shave 20 seconds off of your personal best like you have to do everything right and get everything right and believe in yourself to be able to do it um, there's a great deal of risk you know it's not something you can just decide to go out and do tomorrow it's a massive ask to try and achieve your absolute best when you demand it from yourself you know like it goes without saying we all want to go faster I'm no exception but like we really have to we really have to sort of believe in ourselves sometimes and so here we are we've we've catapulted ourselves to the last section of the climb i gotta be honest there's not much to tell you about the whole way i rode this climb because as you've seen from the power data you can follow along and you can see what i've done it i i'm i'm chuffed a bit with the way i rode it you can see peak heart rate coming in now you can see peak power coming in now peak one and two minute power is coming in this last section where i had this little bit of a headwind i love this last bit uh, maybe not too much of this bit here because it drags on forever and a day but the bit just before it where you go under the tunnel and there's lots of switchbacks like one after another and you're constantly thinking like am i gonna get to the top i'm nearly there it's like it's only a couple of minutes you know and i've just got to squeeze 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 and it, yeah, it's it, it's such a you know I, I I'm not hating on anybody like I love climbing and that's just something I do yeah um, you know you you might love going downhill and that's something you do I I honestly don't mind we're all riding bikes we're all trying to go faster or we're all trying to just enjoy 
or which whatever makes you enjoy you know cycling that's just part of it and like what gets people people's bums on bikes at the end of the day so I hope you've enjoyed this video I hope you've enjoyed this chat and like I said do what you want with the footage you can mute me and put some inspirational music over it and go and crush yourself tonight on the turbo trainer I really don't mind but guys thank you so much for watching there is the top I actually went through the top because I was really paranoid about where the finish line was and as you can see I come to an absolute stop um, all relative of course to the speed I was going but <laughs> I take up the whole road just trying to get <laughs> just trying to get through the um, this really cool cut through with the with the rock but yeah I am absolutely blown at this point so thank you so much for watching everybody and uh, yeah I really hope you uh, enjoyed this video and subscribed and stick around for the 312 video much the same bit of commentary a bit of vlogging you're gonna love it I'm sure so Thank you so much for watching, have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one. Did we do it? Let's find out.